The Blogons app will allow you to display your most recent blog post on any of your pages on your website. So it will pull in the content, the part of the content from uh, your recent blog post and display it in cards. So let's have a look on how to do that. So when adding the element, you can see in your left sidebar that you will have three new elements called blog, Blogons cards, Blogons image and Blogons styles. So when adding the Blogons cards to your page, you can see that there is a placeholder of three cards actually. So also in your editor, it will look slightly different than on the live page because on the editor, it will not actually pull in the, the same content. So on the editor, it's uh, merely here actually to style your elements such as the titles, the amount of lines you want and the colors. So also background and things like that. So next, so how do we do that? Well, we go to our blog, blog on, uh, not blog on, we go just go to our blog page and we grab the URL from the address bar here. We go to our element and at the top where it says add URL, you just paste over your URL. And then when publishing it and going to the page, scrolling down, you can see that it is pulling in the info from the uh, last three blog posts. So we got the, this image being pulled in with a part of the title and this one as well. So when using the link, like for example, in the first one, you can see that it is going directly to the blog post and not to the index uh, page, of course. Now, as for the amount of blog posts, by default, it is being set to three uh, cards. You can add that number up to 25, but you do need to make sure, of course, that one, you have 25 blog posts and to in your settings in your blog section here that your posts per page are set to 25 so if for example this number is lower than the amount of blog cards you will be wanting to preview it's uh, only going to take the amount available so if you set this number here to one and then in the app you ask to be pulling in three cards it's not going to be able to do that it needs to be set to at least three but in this case, I'm going to leave it at 225 like this. Save it. Most of the settings are for styles, as I said before. So you can style your background, the font weight, the font colors, and so on. Uh, but you can also, like I said, choose the amount of block cards. In this case, I got block 12 block posts, so I'm going to be displaying it. By default, all of the cards will be displayed having the same height. So when you display it like this, you can see that all of our cards here have are having the same height. But you can also choose to use a variable height. So when toggling on this thing, this setting here, variable height, and publishing it, you will see that now the blog on card will have a, a different height. The height is based actually on the image that is being pulled in. The image by default is the first image that is being added to your blog post. More on that later because uh, the blog on's image element that you have uh, can force to pull in another uh, image apart from the f another part uh, instead of the first image that has been added. So now you can see that it uh, preserves the aspect ratio of that image and your blog post will be displayed in a masonine masonry type of style now what else can we do besides hiding some things just like as you can also decide to show uh, to hide the image and you can also as another way of displaying it you can set the block card to full width and then you can add it to full width in case you want to display it like this or if you want to add it to inside a column maybe display this full width we're also going to remain using that image you can also hide or show the blog info the blog info is that uh, date a blog post is being posted and the amount of comments that are being that were being made you can align that info now for the next uh, an important setting is the preview text so you can see there in the example these are all uh, dummy text examples of course where you see far far away behind the word mountains this is text that is being pulled in from the first element that is being added on that specific blog post so with this text element right here so if we have a look and we see here in the first um, 
block card. You can see where it says the copy warned the little blind text and so on. And then when you go to the post uh, itself, you can see that this is the first text element and this info is being pulled in. Now as for the amount of uh, info or text rather from that first paragraph that is being pulled in, it depends on the amount of uh, lines you set it to. By default it is being set to three. Do know that it is an amount of lines in height and not an amount of sentences. So if you would set that to one, it's just going to use the height of one, sen not sentence, but one line. If we set it to five, it's going to fill up five heights. Next, for the read more link, you can see that you can add a specific text as well. So if we would say go to post, because it's going directly to that post, of course, that the title will be changed. You can change, of course, those colors uh, as well as the divider color. And next, you can also hide the read more link. So when you hide it, it is gone. And what will happen then now? I'm going to publish it. So by hiding this read more link, before we had our read more link that was uh, taking us directly to the blog post. When publishing now, and going back to this page, you can see that the link now, that the whole card is becoming a link actually. So when clicking on one of the blog cards, it will take you directly, as you can see in the URL bar, to that specific blog post. And that's how this works. <clears throat> so now let's move on and let's have a look at the blog -ons image and blog -ons styles. Those are both to be used within your blog itself. So let's go to the blog page. And then you can see that, uh, for example, we have here our, our sidebar and let's, or let's focus first on the blog on the image actually. So as shown here, you can see this is our image, the first image. And let's go back to that page. And you see that that image is being pulled in right here. But let's say, for example, we don't want to use the first image, we want to use any other image. Well, then you use the blog -ons image element. So when dropping it on the card, you can drop that anywhere. Just need to make sure, of course, that it's being added uh, before the read more line, of course. So now when uploading that image, just like you would with any other Weebly image, Uploading this example image. You can see that there is also a placeholder that says image for block card. And then this will be pulling in the, that specific image rather than the first image. You also have the option of hiding the image. What this will do is it will hide the image from the blog post itself and will only be using it for the block card. So this might be a nice thing if, for example, you are creating some images that says uh, blog post one, blog post two, and so on with an image then you can use that specific image to be pulled in and you can still hide it from your blog post. In this case, I'm not gonna hide it. It can perfectly be there, that image. So then when publishing this, I'm publishing the site and going to the page, you can see that our new image is being pulled in and it is not the first image anymore, but it is our second image. So this is how you use this element. Now moving on to the blog on styles. Blog on styles, you can add it directly inside of your sidebar, for example. You can see that some styles are being applied. So let's click on that button. And then we have our styles coming up. Beside all the obvious, just as uh, background titles, colors, and background colors, there are some line color uh, styles as well. The divider color can be styled in a different color. Just gonna go quickly style some things here. You can change the width of the divider. You can set it to zero if you would like to hide it. You can make it thicker, of course, by incrementing that the, the value. You can give a background to the header itself, show some padding if you wanna move away the things. You can give a specific color to the block date as well as the comments link on the top and the comments link at the bottom. And then for the body, you can also, of the blog post, you can give it a background. So let's give it a light gray background, for example, just like that. And you will see we'll have a background. You can also set a border if you like that around. 
so now you can have a border I had some radius as well if you want to make it rounder zero will make it let's set it to five so it's more visible zero will make it rectangular re rectangular will make it squared angles I mean and five will make it rounded angles or you can set it uh, even higher beside that you also have settings to style your sidebar so if you want to give a uh, for example, let's say in color to your sidebar, you just add it like that. You can also again add a, a border if you like to, and some border radius. So let's set it to five as well. And then the last setting for your styles here is that you have the option of adding a toggle function to your categories and your uh, archives list. So what this will do is when you toggle this on, it will uh, pull everything together and you will uh, let your visitors be able to access your categories or archives by clicking on the title. You'll see that now. So once you're happy with all your styles, <coughs> um, what you can do is, what you can, no, what you need to do actually is you need to specify this because although it is visible now in your editor, you still need to apply it actually to your live site. So when using these custom styles, you just toggle on the use custom styles and click on the apply button. When you can see the green check icon, you know that uh, where it says styles have been applied or added to the live site, you know that you have done it correctly. So now when publishing the site, like this, I'm going to a blog page. I refreshed again. You can see that those styles have been applied and it is being applied to every blog post. Now, right now they're a bit close here, so we also have the option of blog post, of adding a bit of more margin. So let's say, set this for example to 25. And then we have a bit more, refresh better. Didn't apply it. So a quick look why it didn't apply it. Because of course, when making a change, although it will, again, it will be visible here. It's a good thing it happened to me. So now you can see here that there is actually 25 pixels of margin, but it hasn't been applied to our live site because we need to click on this. So each time you need, you make a change on this and you want it to be uh, visible on your live site, you do need to click on apply uh, styles. So refreshing here again, we should be able now to see our uh, margin. As you can see here, now there is a bit more margin. And you can also see those archives and categories that are being uh, pulled together and that you can open by just clicking on them. So this is a handy feature in case you have a lot of archives or categories that are uh, subdivided. So that is, and maybe the next thing that in case you do not want to use those styles, but you had applied them, well, then you need to be taking them off. But before taking them off and just deleting this uh, blog ons element, you need to untoggle the use custom style and click on apply styles. And now you can see that the styles have been removed from the live site. So now you see a different icon. And then you are able to delete the element and it will also be gone from your uh, pub, uh, from your editor side. So now when refreshing, it will be just like this. So I hope this helps and thank you. If you got questions or other, do please get in touch with us. Thank you.